Bald eagle. Bald eagle. Bald eagle. You know they're not really bald, it's just feathers. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman. Trout identification. Let's go. I do have a degree in fisheries biology. Taxonomy. Binomial nomenclature. So I might actually be qualified to do this video. I'm like super smart. Wicked smart. I'm only going to talk about the trout in the United States because that's what I know. And I'm from the U.S. and you know we only think about ourselves. Bold Eagle. If you poke around on social media platforms, it becomes evident that people are not good at identifying trout. People do not know what they're catching. Now, this is slightly more complicated than I'm going to make it sound, but I'm going to explain it the easy way. All you scientists, just back off. There are three main groups. Rainbows and cutthroats, chars, and then brown trout and Atlantic sand. There's also tiger trout, brook brown cross, but we're not going to talk about them because they're fake. Let's start with the one everyone knows, rainbow trout. Oncorhynchus micus. Silvery fish, maybe a rosy stripe down the side, greenish on the back, black spots on a light background. It might have lots of spots, might have very few spots. Historically, rainbow trout existed in rivers that flowed into the Pacific Ocean. Since then, they've been stocked everywhere. A lot of times you'll see rainbows missing fins or with their nose rubbed off. That's because it's a stocked fish and it grew up in a concrete raceway. It's still a rainbow, just a miserable excuse for a rainbow. Trivia timeout. Wild versus native fish. Wild just means it was born in the stream. It wasn't raised in a hatchery and stocked. Native means that that fish is historically from that area. Those fish lived there before Europeans came and messed everything up. I was hoping to have some live examples for you to look at, but I have not caught any fish. Pretty unhuge of me. I know I'm not supposed to drink a beer until I catch a fish, but I was thirsty. Now, rainbow trout are in the same genus, Oncorhynchus, as cutthroat trout, Oncorhynchus clarkii. Cutthroats can look pretty similar to rainbows, dark spots on a light background, but they're usually more yellowish or brown and the spots are concentrated towards the tail. But the best way to tell it's a cutthroat is the slashes under the jaw. They're right here. Maybe that's why they're called cutthroat trout. Now's a good time to like this video and subscribe to my channel. New video every Monday. So here's where it gets a little complicated. Rainbow trout and cutthroat trout hybridize a lot. That means they make babies. And there's a lot of places, like right here, where rainbow trout were stocked on top of existing cutthroat populations. So what happens then? They interbreed. The rainbow cutthroat hybrid is called a cut bow. Clever, huh? But they don't all look the same. This fish could be mostly rainbow trout, while this one is mostly cutthroat trout, and a whole bunch of in-between. It's a spectrum. You could catch a fish that looks just like a rainbow, but he's got little cut slashes there. He's got some cutthroat in him. Cutthroat trout are also native to the Pacific drainages, but some of them actually made it over the divide into rivers that drain into the Atlantic. They're native all the way from the Pacific coast to the Rocky Mountains. Did you know that most of the alpine lakes in the mountains never had fish originally? They were stocked. And listen, let me tell you something. If you're around me, don't call them cutties. I can't stand that. Oh, let's get some sick cutties, bruh. Cuts, cutthroats, whatever. Every time you say cutty, a brook trout makes it over a fish barrier. Time to refresh. Well, what about golden trout? I almost forgot. Oncorhynchus micus agua bonita. That's El Spaniel. Currently, the golden trout is classified as a subspecies of the rainbow trout, which I don't necessarily agree with, but I'm not the one in charge. Golden trout are native to the Sierra Nevada range in California, but they've also been stocked in other mountain ranges around the West. They're mostly yellowish. They have a red stripe down the side, some black spots, no cutthroat slash. The little ones will usually have par marks which are big ovals down their side. Now, wait a minute. I was fishing with a guide, and we caught a golden trout, and it didn't look anything like that, and it looked like this. Yeah, this is something that needs to be addressed. This is what most people know to be a golden trout. It is not a golden trout. That is a mutant rainbow trout. Oh, it's albino then. Not exactly. It's what's called xanthic. It is a yellow form of a rainbow trout. Black eyes, not red. They're more correctly referred to as palomino trout. Let me say it again. They are not golden trout. If you continue to call them golden trout, you're officially banned from fly fishing. I make the rules. The most important thing you need to know about palominos is that they are super lame. They're fake, they're stocked, they're also fake. You can see them a mile away. Look, a swimming banana. Real good osprey bait though. Hey, listen. 
I'm not trying to tell you how to fish. Uh, yeah, you are. If you want to go catch a big banana and knock yourself out. Personally, I think it's dumb. That's just my opinion. Trivia timeout. When do you use the word fish, and when should you use the word fishes? Fish refers to many individuals of one type of fish. Fishes refers to many different types of fish. That big school of tuna is a bunch of fish. Those bass and bluegill and catfish over there are fishes. See? Wicked smart! All right, let's move on to the char. Brook trout, bull trout, dolly varden, arctic char, lake trout. We're going to ignore lake trout for now. And to be honest with you, the whole bull trout, dolly varden, arctic char thing, I don't understand it all. So we can learn that another time. So we're just going to talk about brook trout. Salvalinus fontanalis. Brook char. If you want to be super cool, you spell char with two R's. Brook trout are native to the Appalachian Mountains. We say Appalachian around here. Brook trout are generally greenish. They might have a red or orange belly, black inside the mouth, light spots on a dark background, red spots with blue halos. But the best way to identify a brook trout is to look at its back. Brook trout have worm-like markings that are called vermiculations. See, I told you I was smart. From what I I've seen brook trout are most often confused with our next fish, the brown trout, Salmo truta. Brown trout are from Europe and Asia. They never existed in North America naturally. They're usually brownish or yellowish. You want me to say buttery, don't you? Well, I won't. Get out of here with that. Their backs are usually a little bit greenish. They always have black spots and sometimes they have red spots, but no blue halo around those red spots. The inside of the mouth is white. All right, you got all that locked away up here? If this subject interests you, check out a book called Trout and Salmon of North America by the late Honorable Dr. Robert Benke. That dude was the man. It's a fascinating book that goes into far more detail than I have. And it's got great illustrations by Joseph, I'm not sure how to say his name. Link down below. All right, I'm gonna go try to catch a fish now. Thanks for watching.